Hey guys, Graham McDonald here, and welcome to the Martial Arts Business Success Podcast number 79. Now, we've done a bit of a role change. <laughs> we normally, Phil, for the last 78 episodes is intro, we thought we'd change it up and give it to you guys straight. So, we've got a pretty exciting Take episode. five. Take five, yes, <laughs> honestly. G'day guys, Graham McDonald here from the Institute of Martial Arts, and we're here for our... <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Martial Arts... <laughs> Hey guys, Graham McDonald here, and welcome to the Martial Arts Business is set. Six, so I gotta get it out. Hey okay. Graham. Yeah. I'm Graham always. <laughs> so a pretty exciting episode this time, and really it's all about you guys as a business owner, taking that transition from being the, the face, being the guy who does everything, to slowly stepping back and being able to step off the bat and really kind of spend time invested in your business, not having to do everything yourself. So Phil, what strategies have we done to be able to step off the mats? Uh, well, look, it really good. If it, I mean, initially you need to build a team yeah. to be able to support that. So definitely if you're a solo man or woman operator and you're in there and you've got no team, no assistance, no nothing, I would first start there, building an instructor team of assistants, uh, helpers that you can trust, uh, that you can rely on to, you know, like, I mean, imagine if you, had, if you didn't have them and you had to duck off of the toilet, mm. then classes there all by themselves. That's just not gonna work. So you really need to start investing in your team and building a team right from the ground level all the way up to the point where you have like pad pals, um, you know, odd partner um, fillers, you've got people who can walk around tying belts, you've got those, that type of thing, you've got then people who can take warm ups, etc., etc. So, really building your instructor team would be strategy number one. Strategy number two would then be slowly, very slowly, I call it sort of bleeding yourself off the mats. Mm. So, you know, the first thing that I would be doing if I had an instructor that was uh, had capable to take little warm ups and bits and pieces and drills, skills and drills, is literally the first thing would be is to step behind them and be the voice in the ear. Still let them take the, the, the drill, the warm up, the, the whatever it may be, the game of the class, mm. but me be on the mat, whispering in the ear, helping them, guide them, picking them up on little mistakes and how they can improve it. That would be sort of step number one, would you yeah. say, yeah? So in, in regards to that sort of process, I know that myself and Phil have done this quite well, is when we step slightly back and, and whisper in the ear, that's one thing, but to be able to then give them the role where we can then move back to where the parents are or the other people mm. watching are, and almost do a third party promo. And what I mean by that is, we basically point out, for example, let's say Phil was taking a class, I'd speak to the parents going, wow, look how well Phil is doing. Geez, what a fantastic job role he's in to be able to learn and develop as an instructor. So what I'm doing, I'm singing their praises and the parents or the other people who are watching are nodding going, yeah, wow, that's great. So they don't see the void of me just gone. They start to look at Phil or whoever the instructor is in a whole different light as, wow, that's great. They get the opportunity to learn and develop, but I'm still there to support and help out. So yeah. we've definitely done that where we will just maybe do a lap around, speak to the parents for about a minute or so, and then go back and rejoin the instructor. So they know they're not left there mm. uh, all by themselves. So yeah. that's really paid dividends to us and that lap slowly gets longer and longer and longer. And before you know it, you're almost sitting in the crowd with the parents yeah. watching the entire class, yep. and they're telling you how good the instructor is, that they're yeah. almost better than you. So that's that's a great success point. Yeah, so I mean, it's a big, big part of it is the third, pro, third party promo is really um, pushing and promoting everyone else rather than you. Like, mm. one of the biggest lessons we learned to get out of the engine room and start sailing our ship was when we first started, you know, it's inevitable. You want to be everywhere, your name's on every, flyer, your photos everywhere, but and, and people see you everywhere, they hear you everywhere, they expect you everywhere. So you know, there was that moment I remember we were like, that's coming down, that's coming down, we'll take our name off there, now these letters are going out, they're gonna have this head instructor's name on it, not ours. Mm. And it was really just giving the perception that the school was being run by us, but it was being sort of, the, the people who were on the engine room floor were all the other team as yeah. well. And we were really promoting them as key players um, key people of influence within our business. So that was another strategy that we use as well. So going from letting them do a drill and whispering in the ear, then walking around doing a lap, speaking to the parents, doing third party promo, then it's almost like, okay, so if I broke my class down into 2020 20, 20 in an hour plan, you know, everyone does a little things a little bit different, it would be like, 
let the instructor do the warm up as I do the loop and talk to parents, also give feedback. Then I can come step back in, do a drill skill to show the difference between the two and try and say, this is what I would do better. Yep. This is how I do it. So they can watch and learn. So one is whisper in the ear and give them feedback so they can do um, in, in drill sort of um, praising. Then watch me do it so they can watch and see it happen. Then give them another section of the class and say, now try and do it how I did it. Yeah. So it's almost like this tic-tac-toe of this class. Now, th now let me just get this right and, and straight off the bat that this process is probably a three, six, even 12 month process depending on the instructor. Do you know what I mean? So everyone learns differently. Mm. So you might have to start uh, stay with the whisper in the ear for quite a long time. Someone might pick that up real quickly. Now you're doing show me, yeah. do it like this, and then you do it. So that might be a three month, six month process. And then that time gets longer and longer. So the person ends up taking 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes of class. I end up being on the mat with them, I'm on the bench with the instruct with the parents. Then next thing you know, I'm looking from afar and I'm slowly bleeding myself out of that class. Yeah, look, it's it's really important too to get the instructor or the developing instructor to also look at you as an instructor and give you feedback for what you're doing. So for example, we do this in our program where myself and Phil may take a class, do a drill, whatever else, we'll ask the growing instructors, the development instructors, so what did we do? What did you notice about what we did? So they're actively looking not just nodding and going, wow, that was wonderful, but what did we do that was a little different? So again, it gets them thinking analytically so they can start to develop that and then go, great, we did uh, better volume, more hand gestures, whatever it may be. So next time you take the drill, I want you to add that in. So it's always important to communicate, get feedback and small steps. You know, like, like Phil pointed out, this is not a one minute sort of affair where you get it done and set and forget, it's a development. I guess something else that we spoke about recently with a couple of guys that we mentor and help out is don't be afraid to let your staff make mistakes. Mm. It is okay. And I think when we've asked our staff who now run our, our schools for us, and they're like, you know, they were running a multi-million dollar school and they were 25 and doing a phenomenal job. We asked them, what was it that we did as the owners and the bosses that helped you develop to the level you are? And they said the, the, the first and foremost thing was, you believed in us, but you allowed us to make mistakes. And what you do is you made the mistake, go, guys, well done, great effort. If it was me, next time round, probably try a little bit more like this and you may get better results. Rather than, oh, what did you do that for? So it's important that you only give them enough so they don't make critical errors, but just enough and then grow and build on top of that as you go. Yep. And that really comes down to the 80-20 rule, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could take the class and the experience for the students and parents, in my point of view, is 100%. Like the level of instruction, you know, it's my school, my business, I'm a, I can deliver 100% value. But I'm stuck by not letting someone else come in mm -hmm. and deliver a, a lower level of service or ability. But it's that um, allowance of your instructor to come in and be under your level, 80%, lets you remove yourself and work on 20% on the business, on running it. Mm. And the only way you're gonna get be able to run your business is if you can spend that 20% uh, of the time working on your instructor, not showing them. So you really, you gotta, the 80-20 rule is so, so uh, relevant to so many things in business, uh, it's not funny. So don't think that your instructor is ever gonna be to your level. You know what, we actually think, and I said to my said to the staff the other day, I want them to be better than me. Yeah. But the only way they can be better than me is if I first let them have a chance and give it a go. Mm. They're not gonna be better than me straight off the bat. They're gonna be 80%, they're gonna be worse than me. But I'm gonna bring them up to my level and then guess what, bang, they're gonna have their flavor. They're gonna have their way of doing things. And you know, the greatest form of uh, appreciation from an instructor is to see your students be better than you. Hey guys, just the true story here. My, my, my little boy, he's eight years old, he trains trains at one of our other schools. And he said to me one day, the instructor there, who obviously is, uh, we've developed, he turned around and goes, Dad, that instructor is better than you are. <laughs> better than you. Uh, and I just went, high five, mate, he yeah. is, perfect. And that was great going like, you know, I, I think I taught, taught him a technique. He goes, no, 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 the other instructor taught me this way, it was correct, but he said it was a better way of doing it. And I was like, man, that, that is cool where you, your own son thinks yeah that the, the, the new instructors or the developing instructors are better than you are. So that just shows 
the confidence that we have in our team that they can do and execute extremely well. So it's uh, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, cool guys. Well, um, look, we're gonna wrap up this podcast now. We've got a shout out for one of our sponsors, Hyper. Graham, you've been dealing with Roland and um, Jason, Jason for a fair bit. What's look, going on? We've been involved with the guys for geez, nearly five years now in different ways. And and the program that we use is the Hyper Pro School. And really there's so many great material in there that we use to add value into our school, both from a black belt club perspective, the Hyper Pro training, which really works on that tricking, that athleticism. So if you're a tournament based school, a really great way to, to add some great flavor in there. So you're an elite sort of uh, player in that realm or you've got a great add value too into your sparring program, which is the Hyper Fight Club. Again, it's something that we love. We get our teeth into it, our team love it. So guys, I'd highly recommend you go and check them out. They're really exciting with their content curriculum. Check it out team, so that's the Hyper. So go and Google the guys, get onto their website. There's an area there that if you decide it's the right fit for you, Check it out, log in, punch in the code, punch in TIMA, T-I-M-A, where you've got the section there, and I'll give you a $100 discount on their premium package, which is the Hyper Pro School. Highly recommended. Guys, we've used it forever. It's made some great, significant uh, add value into our schools. So guys, you know, I can't say enough. Check it out, check out the guys, and the rest is history. Awesome, and for all the podcast listeners and viewers out there who are loving what we've got to say and what we've got to offer, we've got a really cool deal for you. It's called Try Five for Five, which means you get to try our complete martial arts, um, uh, martial arts business solution uh, for $5 for five days. Uh, normally it's $99 for the month, but you get it $5 for five days. And it gives you a real peek underneath the bonnet. Check out anything and everything you can under there. Really, we created this, this uh, sort of online platform for you to be able to build, grow, and monetize your business and your school. So get in there, shoot over to our website, tima.com.au, scroll down, look for the $99 a month package, in the promo code, type in TRY5, that's T-R-Y and the number five, TRY5, and you're gonna get five days of access just for $5, so you've got no excuses to start building your business. Well, that's another wrap for us here at Tima. Can't wait to hear from you guys, any questions that you have, send them through at our email, admin at tima.com.au. We'd love to hear from you guys. Have a fantastic week. Guys, just a quick one. If you love my intro better than Phil's, <laughs> let me know, admin at tima.com.au, and I'll make sure that I intro it next time as well, well too. Well, we'll put some outtakes for the next video. All right, All right guys, take care.